Hi everyone and welcome to our training on how to organize using social media platforms. My name is Geordie Barry and I work in digital for NBDEMS and today I am very pleased to be joined by my boss, Digital Director Emma Kraus. Emma, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Jordi. I'm really looking forward to doing this training with you. So in this training, we're gonna talk about a couple of things. Uh, we'll go over how our social media platforms are different from each other. We'll talk about what it looks like to use Twitter and organize what it looks like uh, on Facebook and then on Instagram, and we'll walk through some best practices. And then in each of those social media sections on each different platform, we'll also talk about how you get set up with an account um, on those platforms if you aren't already familiar. So how are our social media platforms different? So some social media norms on Facebook. Um, so Facebook is a platform where you're usually posting less frequently. It's typically most people post once or twice a day. Uh, and on Facebook, you have an unlimited character count. Um, you can also create open and closed groups on Facebook to help you build an online community. So for example, um, on the MBDX Facebook, we have a couple of groups um, for folks to join. We have a volunteers group, a, a women's group, and a rural Democrats group. Um, so those are really great opportunities for you to organize your friends, your family, your coworkers, uh, whoever in your life you think may be interested in getting involved. And then typically um, the audience on Facebook is more your friends, your family. Um, those are the people that you are Facebook friends with. Uh, and so they're the your target audience, really. And then as far as demographics go, uh, Facebook is the most intergenerational social media platform. So you can see in that uh, age group breakdown, it's pretty evenly dispersed amongst um, all of the age groups. So you um, on Facebook, you're able to cast a really wide net of people um, by it being such an intergenerational platform. Now on Twitter, Twitter is a little different. Um, so you can only post, um, make a tweet be 280 characters at a time. Um, and if you're posting anything like a link with like how to sign up for an event or a link to like a news article uh, or anything like that, then um, you're uh, actually gonna be eating into your um, characters as well. Um, people typically post a lot more frequently on Twitter than they do on other social media platforms. Um, so, you know, you're seeing two, three, four, five um, posts a day from um, people's accounts on Twitter. And then um, on, um, on Twitter, you're also able to use uh, hashtags to help you find uh, others who are talking about similar events and news stories to you and really track some of that um, kind of ongoing news and interests. Um, so you can see what's um, what people are talking about nationally, what people are talking about um, in your state, all of that. Um, and then the audience on Twitter is a little different. So, you know, people like members of the media and news outlets and political groups are much more active on Twitter. Um, so you are able to reach those folks um, on Twitter in a way that you don't really reach as much on, on Facebook or on Instagram. And then demographically, Twitter does tend to trend younger, um, which you can see there in the 18 to 24 year old uh, group, it's about 44%. And then our last platform is Instagram. Um, so Instagram is a much more um, visual based platform. Uh, it's really centered around graphics and images and that kind of uh, photo storytelling that people really respond well to. Uh, Instagram is a lot of fun because they have, uh, if you're not familiar, a feature called an Instagram story where you can kind of uh, chronicle what's going on. Um, and do some quick sharing of other people's posts as well onto your Instagram story and really um, kind of give people a peek into what you're up to and what you're doing. Uh, similar to Facebook, uh, Instagram is a uh, much more friends and family based audience. Um, and then demographically is um, definitely our youngest trending platform um, with 75% uh, being 18 to 24 year old users on Instagram. So now I'm gonna walk you through uh, what it looks like to organize on Twitter. 
So if you have never used Twitter before, this is what it looks like. Um, the first step you would need to do to get set up to organize on Twitter is actually go to twitter.com in your web browser. And then if you already have an account, that's great, awesome. You would log in and um, get going. We'll talk about some content in a few slides. But if you are not familiar uh, with Twitter and you don't have an account and need to get set up, what you'd wanna do is click that sign up button. And then it's just gonna prompt you to put in some of your personal information, so your name, your phone number, your date of birth. If you don't wanna use your phone number, you can also use your email address instead by just clicking that use email instead, and then you'll hit next, and then you'll hit next again. And then it's just gonna ask you to confirm the information that you've just entered and click sign up. Once you've done that, it's gonna ask you to either verify your account with your cell phone number or your email address, whichever one you put in. Um, so you'll just verify either that phone or email address and click okay. And then it's gonna send you a verification code. Um, so if you chose text message, it's gonna text you a verification code. If you did email, you'll need to check your email for that verification code and you'll just um, drop it in there and click next. And then you'll be able to create your password. So you can see there the passwords must be eight characters or more. So you'll just wanna put in your password and then click next. Um, my general advice on passwords, if you wanna do something that is secure, unique to this account, but something you'll remember. Uh, you're also uh, able to add a profile picture. So if you are um, on your phone or your computer and you have a picture you uh, really like and want a feature, you can upload that there. Uh, if you don't have one, you can also choose skip for now. And then you are able to create a little bio for yourself. Um, so this is really a way to show your followers who you are as a person and kind of show some of that personality right away on your account. So for example, um, I mentioned in my Twitter bio that you know, I do digital for MV Dems, I love voting, I love coffee, I love teen TV, I put my pronouns in my Twitter bio, you could too. Um, you can also put that you are an MV Dems volunteer in your Twitter bio, really make it about who you are um, and kind of why you're doing this. And then uh, you'll get this, what are you interested in page? So if you wanna, you know, click some of those things you're interested in so you get um, things on your feed that you're interested in, you can do that. Um, or you can click skip for now. Uh, next, it'll bring you to some suggestions for you to follow. Um, so you can see some of those suggestions there. Um, you can choose to follow people right away if you see someone that catches your interest. Maybe you're um, a Vegas resident, you want to follow Las Vegas locally. Um, maybe you want to follow Ellen DeGeneres or Elizabeth Warren. You can go ahead and click the follow button. That's how um, you're going to be able to see folks' tweets on your timeline as they come up. Um, if you don't want to follow any of these people just yet, you can click next. And then you're done. You made your uh, Twitter account. It's official. Um, you are now a Twitter user. Congratulations. Um, if you are new to Twitter, if you are returning to Twitter, um, and you aren't already following us, I would absolutely suggest that is the first thing you do. Um, so up at the top of your Twitter page, um, there's a search bar. In that search bar, you can just type in NV Dems and our page will come up. Um, so you can see uh, at NV Dems, that's us. All Twitter accounts start with an at sign. So we are at NV Dems. I am at Emma D. Krause. Um, all Twitter accounts are set up that way. Um, and then you'll see next to us, we have that blue um, check mark. That means we are a verified account. So once you've clicked on our account, it'll take you to our feed so you can see um, this is us, we are verified. Um, you can see our bio, we're the Nevada State Democratic Party, um, fighting for progress in the Silver State, have uh, questions about voting, call our voter protection hotline number. Um, you can see that we have our website linked there um, as well. And you can go ahead and click that follow button. Um, by doing that, you'll be able to see all of our updates, um, and all the content that we put out on this platform and same for any other account that you're interested in following. Um, on Twitter, there are a couple of features you can do along with creating your own content. Um, you can uh, both like and retweet other people's content. So you can see that little kind of looks a little bit like the recycling icon um, 
with the two arrows, that's the retweet icon. And so um, you can click on that in order to retweet or repost something onto your own feed. So this is saying that, oh, I really like this content. I want this to appear on my feed as well. Um, so I'm gonna retweet that by clicking that uh, button right there. When you go to retweet something, you have two options. You can either just um, retweet it or you can retweet it with a comment. Um, so when you click the button, it'll show those two options. Um, so again, retweeting is when you um, share this post without any additional comments um, and add it to your own profile. And then if you want to retweet something with a comment, you can do so by selecting retweet with comment. Um, this means that you can add something personal on someone else's post and share that to your newsfeed. Once you've clicked on that retweet for a comment button, uh, it'll open up, you'll see the tweet you want to um, retweet with comment and then uh, an option to add your comment there. So for in this example, we have our how to vote in the primary um, post from MB Dems. And if I were quote tweeting that, I would say something maybe like, I just filled out my ballot. It was so easy. You should too. Something like that or any other commentary you want to add um, to add your own um, personal um, comment to this post and then you'll click retweet and then it'll show up on your personal feed. So um, if you um, see that little home button in the top of your screen, um, that's where you can find uh, your news feed and that's where you'll see all of the tweets that come from people you follow. So if you're following um, us at MB Dems, you'll see our posts. If you're following your friends, your family, news outlets, reporters, they'll all show up by clicking that on that little home icon. It kind of looks like a birdhouse, you know, because Twitter is a bird. Um, so you'll just click on that to see all of the tweets. Um, and then you'll also be able to, up at the top under home, uh, you'll see your um, profile picture icon and then it'll say what's happening, kind of grayed out. That's where you can start drafting your own tweets right there um, so that you can um, tell people what you're thinking, what you're doing. Um, in your tweets, you can add a couple of different features and I'll walk through those. So you can add um, photos, GIFs, polls, emojis, and then you can schedule tweets. So we'll start first with photos. You click on that little picture icon in order to add a photo to your tweet. So say you have a graphic you want to add or um, you just got off of a uh, Zoom phone bank and you took a screenshot of you on the Zoom phone bank and you want to include a picture of that um, and talk about what a great time you had at that phone bank, you can do so by adding that photo there. Um, if you want to add a GIF, um, which is like kind of a fun animated um, image, it could be like a video clip, uh, it could be an actual animation, um, anything like that. Um, you can click on the GIF icon. It'll then um, let you search for GIFs. So you can see some of those predetermined categories that you could look for a GIF in. But if there's um, something you know you want to GIF up, for example, you want to include a GIF of Obama in your tweet, you would just search Obama up at the top. Um, and then all of the GIFs of Obama would come up. Um, so you can see you have a ton of options to choose from. Um, personally, I love the Obama mic drop gift, so I'm going to choose that one. And then I've included that in my tweet, um, and I could say something like, just participated in a great phone link with at Emmy Dems. Join me next time. Mic drop Obama. Um, the next thing you can do is include a poll. Um, so you click on that little chart button um, in order to include a poll in your tweet. Um, you uh, are able to select your question and choose the answers you want for that poll. Um, so you can see in our example here, um, we uh, are asking in our poll, what is your favorite way to organize? Um, and we've choose, uh, chosen the options phone bank, texting, and canvassing. Um, you see that little plus icon, that's how you add more choices. So say I wanted to add 
um, voter registration or something else, I could um, click on that plus button and add it uh, as a, a next option. You can also choose how long you want your poll to be open for people to vote in. Um, so here we have it set for seven days. You could do one day, you could do, you know, a flash poll one hour um, if you want it as well. Uh, and then you can also add emojis into your tweets um, as well. So say you want to use um, like a clipboard emoji because you talk about um, how you're registering voters or canvassing or a phone emoji because you're phone banking. Um, you can just click on that smiley face icon to do so. And it'll pull up all the emoji options. Um, you can search or you can scroll. Twitter emojis are very similar to um, the emojis that are included on your cell phone as well. Uh, and then the last feature here is the ability to schedule a post. So this is actually a new feature. You didn't used to be able to do this in Twitter desktop, um, but they just made it available, which is really, really helpful. So you click on that little calendar clock icon. And then you can choose when you want to schedule posts for. Um, this might not be something that you um, use more day to day, um, but it is a really helpful feature for um, someone like me or Jordy who is managing an account for uh, an organization. But you can select the day on which you want to post and the exact time you want to post as well. And then you can just confirm that to schedule your tweet. Um, so again, Twitter only allows you to have a um, 280 character post at a time, um, but they have this feature where you can thread your posts together. So they all appear in a row, um, super neat and clean for you. Um, and so the way you use that feature is by um, up at the top when you're typing in your tweet, um, you'll see a little plus icon and you'll click on that in order to add um, a next tweet to what you've already drafted. So um, you can see in this very descriptive um, Twitter thread here that walks you through the process as well that um, you can type out your first tweet, add a second tweet, um, you could add a third if you're feeling really jazzy, have a lot of um, thoughts to share with folks. Um, and then you um, have the ability to tweet all of these at once. So you're not having to go back and forth and, or anything like that. Uh, and it's super easy to just create that uh, simple thread. Um, so none of your content gets lost and it's super cohesive. Um, and you just click that tweet all button. So again, just to talk a little bit about um, what we at the party use Twitter for, you'll find a lot of breaking news here. Um, put out all of our um, like press releases and statements and stuff. We love to tweet those so that folks can follow along. And then quick reminders, especially voting reminders. This is a huge thing we like to use our, um, our Twitter for, is to make sure people have uh, those quick reminders about whether it's how to fill out a mail-in ballot, um, times for polling locations, things like that. Um, Twitter is really, really great for those quick reminders. Uh, and then just a little bit more about um, kind of the content that you um, should be posting on Twitter. Images are really, really great, great for Twitter. And so are videos, GIFs, um, anything that catches the eye, especially videos, um, because they are six times more likely to be retweeted um, than tweets with no photos or no videos. Um, and they're just fun, right? Like we all love um, seeing those videos and photos show up on our feed, they're, they're much more engaging than just text can be. Um, I talked uh, a little bit ago about hashtags. Uh, my recommendation is to keep your hashtags light. You want one to two hashtags. You don't wanna fill up your whole post with hashtags. Um, you just wanna center it around a couple of things. Um, I really like using holiday hashtags. So whether that's um, Pride or Juneteenth or any other big event that's going on, that's a really great time to use one of those hashtags. Um, because Twitter is character limited, um, even with threads, you know, you don't want to go crazy. You want to keep things concise and digestible on Twitter. Um, and then again, I uh, would definitely recommend that you follow us, local statewide elected officials, 
um, are federally elected officials, progressive organizations, and other causes that you're passionate about, because then you can stay up to date with them. You know, we post a lot at the party about what's happening on our team, what events are going on. Um, our organizers are super active online, making sure that they're plugging in um, volunteers where they can. Our elected officials are super active online as well. They talk a lot, especially right now, about uh, the resources that Nevadans um, can use and take advantage of. Um, so I would really recommend you connecting with them on Twitter. And then we always encourage people who are involved with our organization and the party to post about events that you volunteered at or participated in and ask other people to do the same. Um, this is a really easy way for you to help us get more people involved and bring new people into the fold with us. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jordi, who uh, is going to talk a little bit more about how you organize on Facebook. Great. Thank you so much, Emma. So let's now talk about how you can organize using Facebook. And the very first thing that you're going to need to do is to create an account if you don't already have one. So you'll visit Facebook.com and it will prompt you to put in your first and last name, your mobile number or your email address. I recommend your email address if you do have one. You will then put in a password that you can remember, your date of birth, and this is to verify that you are indeed over the age of 13. And then you'll click sign up at the bottom in the green. Facebook is then going to send you a verification email. So make sure that you check your spam and promotions folders if you haven't received it within a few minutes of signing up. In this email, there's going to be a confirm your account button. So go ahead and click on that and also make sure that you copy that confirmation code because it may ask you to put in this code. Once you've clicked on the verification email, then it's going to ask you to put in the verification code. This is where you'll paste in that number at the very bottom of the email. In some cases, it might take you directly into Facebook, but in other cases, it might ask you to put in this verification code. Once you've done so, your account is officially verified and you'll officially be in your own Facebook account. So once you actually have an account, it's important to personalize it so that people know who you are, what you stand for, what kind of content you'll be putting out, and they can identify you when they're trying to find you on Facebook. So to personalize your profile, you're going to click your name and the gray placeholder picture in the top at the very middle. It will then prompt you to add a photo in the top left. So you can go ahead and click add photo and upload a photo from your computer so that people can identify and find you on Facebook. You'll also want to include some information about yourself and you're not required to put in any of this information, just whatever you are comfortable with sharing. So you can put in your workplace, where you've gone to high school or college, uh, your current city, your hometown, and other information that you you may be interested in including. So you'll click add bio to put this in, and this window will pop up. And then you'll just click on the blue hyperlinks where it says add a workplace or add education if you'd like to include that information. Once you've done so, you'll click save in the bottom right. If you want to search for people to add as friends on Facebook, uh, pages and different groups that you might want to belong to, you can search for them using the top bar. It is a blank white bar. So for example, here we've typed in the Nevada State Democratic Party. So you can actually click on our name in blue at the very top and you know it's us because there is a blue verification tick right next to our name so that you know it is a verified account and it is definitely coming from the Nevada State Democratic Party. So once you've found us, you can then click on our name in blue. And to like a page, which means that you will then receive updates from that page, you can click like. And you'll know that you've successfully liked a page because it will then say in the past tense, liked. 
On the left hand side, you're also going to see options to view different types of content that NVDEMS has put out. So for example, if you click videos, you're going to be able to see all of our live stream videos, media clips, trainings that we've put out on our Facebook page. You'll also be able to see our virtual town hall series and any other videos that we have posted on our Facebook page. If you click on posts, you'll see all of the written updates from NVDEMS. Now, if you'd like to react to a specific post, um, you can hover your mouse over where it says like, and this will show up at the bottom of every single post. So if you hover your mouse, you're going to have a variety of different options. You can thumbs up it, which means that you like it. You can give it a heart, which means you love it. As you can see, there are different options in which you can react to a post. If you would like to share a post, meaning that you would like that particular post to be on your Facebook page, you have two options. You can either click Share Now, Friends, which means it's going to immediately go on your Facebook page, or you can click Share Ellipses, which means that you're going to be adding a comment above the shared post. So if you click share ellipses, a box will then populate and you'll be able to type in your own comment at the top. Once you've done so, you'll then click post in the bottom right, that blue button. After sharing the post, it's now going to appear on your Facebook page. And if you would like to write your own post, you can use the white bar on your Facebook page where it says in gray, what's on your mind. Once you've clicked on that white bar, it's going to prompt you to type in a post and you can include photos and videos by clicking on the photo and video button. And once you're done creating your post, you'll click the blue bar at the bottom where it says post. To find friends on Facebook, you can type in their name at the top in that white bar, and then you can use their picture and information to identify them. So for example, I've searched my name, Geordie Barry, and I'm the first person that pops up, though that might not be the case for everybody. So make sure that you're friending the right person by using their picture. So we can see in this instance, that is a picture of me. I work for the Nevada State Democratic Party. So it's likely the correct Geordie Barry that you're looking for. And to add me, you would click add friend. Once you've clicked on that person, you can also go to their profile. I have privacy settings on mine, so not everything is public. Um, so in this case, you would need to click add friend to see more information that I've put out on my private Facebook page. You will then know that you've sent someone a friend request because it will say friend request send. And once the person has accepted your friend request, you will then receive a notification. You can see all of your notifications by clicking on the icon where it looks like two people. And this is typically in the top right of your screen. You can then write to them publicly by going on their profile and clicking on their empty white box, which will be underneath their picture. So it will say, write something to, and that person's name. And then once you've written a post to them, you'll then click post, which is the blue button that is underneath that white bar. Keep in mind that if you're reaching out to someone using this method, it is going to be publicly seen by other people as well. If you would like to send them a private message so only they see the post, you can do so by clicking message, which is usually towards the top right hand side of your Facebook screen once you go to someone's Facebook profile. A box will then populate at the bottom of the screen and this is where you can type and send messages to that person back and forward. 
There are also a wide variety of different groups that you can join, including our NBDIMS volunteers group. So if you'd like to look for particular groups about causes that you are passionate about, you can search for it at the top using that white bar, just like you would search for someone on Facebook to add as a friend or a different page like the Nevada State Democratic Party that we showed you earlier. So in this case, we're going to look for the NVDEMS Volunteers Group. Once you've found it, um, you're going to see a join button. So in this case, we see there's the NVDEMS Volunteers Group. You know that you're not a member already because it tells you to join. So you'll click that button if you wish to join that particular group. So let's talk about what kind of content you can expect to see from the Nevada State Democratic Party on Facebook. So by following us on our Facebook page, you'll be able to see our Facebook Live Virtual Town Hall events, any video trainings that we put out, you'll be able to receive updates on the party and from elected officials. So as you can see on our Facebook page in the screenshot, we've published an op-ed that was written by Senator Jackie Rosen. And finally, we often post about upcoming events and opportunities for involvement. So this is a great way to make sure that you're constantly receiving updates from the state party. In our volunteer group, this is a great way to recruit volunteers for different events that you might be hosting, connecting with Democrats across the state of Nevada, and learning about different opportunities to get involved in your community. So let's go over some content on Facebook that you can put out. So unlike Twitter, which we talked about in the previous section, you can write longer posts on Facebook. So it's a great platform for you to tell your own narrative and your story, your reason for getting involved. It's important to remember that on Facebook, you're typically connected with people that you've already met, um, as opposed to on Twitter, where you may be following people that you don't know in real life. So Facebook is a lot more of a personal social media tool. Just like on Twitter, on Facebook, videos and images do perform very well. So we encourage you to take videos of yourself um, and share that on your Facebook page and encourage others to do the same that are also volunteering with you. And finally, Facebook is very friendly to discussions and this is because of the comment feature and the sharing feature. So I encourage you all to ask questions and encourage that people engage with your post. So let's say, for instance, you're putting out a post telling people why you're involved in helping elect Democrats up and down the ballot. You might want to ask people why they're involved, why they think it's so critical that we elect Democrats down the ballot in the state of Nevada. The final social media platform that we will cover today is Instagram. And just like in the Twitter and the Facebook sections, we'll first go over how you'll actually create your Instagram account. Now, for most of you who are watching this on a computer, we will show you how to create your Instagram account on your computer. That being said, we do recommend that you use Instagram on your phones because that's where you're going to actually be uploading all of the content but we will cover both in this section. So the first thing that you'll want to do is visit Instagram.com and also visit your app store if you have a smartphone, like an Android or an iPhone, and download the Instagram application. You'll then click sign up and be prompted to put in your phone number, name and email address. You'll then be asked to confirm your birthday and then you'll click next. You're then going to be sent a confirmation email from Instagram, so make sure that you check also your spam and your promotions folders in case the email ends up there. Keep in mind that you want to check the email that was used to create your account. You'll then click on the email from Instagram on the blue button that says confirm your email address. You're then going to be taken to Instagram and be able to use all of the features involved in Instagram. So since you have a new account, Instagram is going to prompt you to do a few things, but you can leave this for now. Go ahead and click on the person icon in the top right to update your profile.
You'll then be able to click on Edit Profile to update your information. So for example, you'll be able to upload a profile photo so that people know that it's you and will be able to identify you when they try to find you and follow you on Instagram. Once you've done that, you should also add a short description, what is, which is called a bio on Instagram. So make sure that you keep it short and let people know who you are and what kind of content you'll be posting. Once you've put in all of the information that you would like to do so, you'll then click Submit at the very bottom. If you'd like to find accounts to follow, you're going to use the search bar at the very top. There'll be a magnifying glass on the left side of the search bar. And then you'll type in the name of the account or the person that you're trying to follow and hit enter or return on your keyboard. So we search for NV Dems, which is us, the Nevada State Democratic Party. And we're the first people that come up. So you can click on our account. It will then take you to our Instagram page and to follow us, which means that you will be receiving updates from whenever we post content, you'll click the blue follow button. It's important to note that you can follow as many people as you'd like and you don't necessarily have to know them online, uh, in person. So for instance, if you'd like to follow Barack Obama on Instagram, you can totally do so. And you'll know for famous people or influential groups that it's definitely them because it, there will be a blue tick next to their name. Just like there was a blue tick next to our name and there is a blue tick next to President Obama's name. If you'd like to interact with a post, you can go ahead and click on it. There will then be a space where you can show that you like the post, which is clicking on the heart on the left hand side. And you can write a comment by clicking add a comment at the very bottom. So let's transition over to the phone version now that you've downloaded the Instagram application and this is where you'll be able to post new pictures. To do so, you'll click the plus icon in the bottom middle of the screen. You'll then be prompted to select a picture from your phone. So it'll be from your camera reel. And if you'd like to post multiple in one post, you'll just continue tapping on the pictures that you'd like to include within that particular post. Once you've tapped on a picture, you'll then click next in the top right. It will then ask if you'd like to select a filter. This just means that it can either enhance the image by making it brighter or give it a different color lens. But you can go ahead and keep it on normal like we will for this section. If you'd like to see all of the filter options, you'll drag your finger from right to left at the bottom of the screen to see all of the different options. Once you're ready, you'll click next. You're then going to be prompted to put in a caption. This is going to be some written text that is found at the bottom of your picture. So you can go ahead and type something in. And once you're finished typing a caption, you'll tap OK in the top right. Now, if everything looks good to you, you can then hit share, which is also in the top right. You'll then see that your post is loading and once it's fully up, it will be public for people who follow your profile to see. If you click the person icon in the bottom right, you can then check to confirm that your picture was indeed posted. So as you can see, our picture is now posted and the post will be available for everyone that's following us to see. So what kind of content can you expect from us on Instagram? You'll expect on the ground updates. We post a lot of videos and pictures of our field team out doing work. You'll see Instagram takeovers. This is our Instagram story series. We had two members of our staff per week will take over our Instagram to show you the inside scoop in their day to day. You'll see a lot more visual and audio content. You'll also see media clips that we post on our Instagram. So what kind of content can you post on Instagram? It's important to keep in mind that Instagram is a lot more centered around visual images. So it's a lot of pictures and it's a lot of videos. 
You want to make sure that you have good lighting when you're taking the picture for Instagram and that it's very clear what the picture is. If it's blurry, then people might be confused by your content. You'll also want to think about what the clear purpose of your picture is. Are you inspiring people to volunteer? Are you educating people about a specific way to volunteer? For instance, phone banking or text banks. Are you posting something entertaining that shows the character and the narrative behind the campaign? Are you announcing an event that's going on? Think about the purpose of your post because everything should have a clear purpose. Also keep in mind that Instagram is very visual, so it's a great opportunity to show people the more personal side of your campaign. Awesome. To round us out, we're just going to talk through a couple of best practices here across all of our social media platforms. Um, so some best practices, we really want people to be positive and uh, include a call to action on social media. Um, we uh, aren't trying to attack anyone using social media. That is not um, in our values. We really want to create a positive online culture where people are finding the resources, information, opportunities that interest them most. Um, and so we really want to focus on our values and our work when we're talking online. Um, another great rule of thumb for social media is that if you would not want something that you post on social media, to be um, reprinted in your local newspaper, you probably shouldn't post it online either. Um, I think we've all seen how social media can become a little volatile um, and very negative, and that's not the mission that we're after online. Um, especially right now, we want to take advantage of the time and the space that people are spending online um, and have a really positive experience for people. Um, I mentioned this when we were talking about Twitter. Um, and I know Jordy mentioned it in um, Facebook and Instagram as well, but images and videos are great pieces of content. Even if it's just a quick picture of you uh, on a Zoom call or you um, with your clipboard doing photo registration um, or a video about why you are so passionate about electing Democrats. Um, anything that um, you're able to express yourself visually um, is a really great way to get people to engage with your content. And then our best, best practice is that um, after any time you volunteer with us, we want you to post about it and ask people to join you. Um, I know I said that earlier, uh, but it's so, so, so important um, that we are inviting more and more people into our organization. And, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, if we don't have photo evidence of it, um, it can sometimes feel like it didn't happen. So we want to get people into the routine of um, taking photos of their volunteering and posting about it and um, really showing that enthusiasm and community that we have amongst our volunteers. And then uh, lastly, I just want to say that um, if you need help, if you have more questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, you can reach us at training at mbms.com or get in touch with your field organizer if you want additional support on using social media to organize. Uh, and if you are, are new with us, you don't know who your organizer is, you can always email us at training at mbdumps.com um, to get connected with your organizer as well. Great, thank you so much, Emma, for joining us for this training on social media. And thank you to all of you for watching. We hope that you'll continue to stay involved with our organization you can sign up to volunteer with us at nbdems.com slash events. Please do connect with us on Facebook in our Facebook group, Twitter, and Instagram, now that you all know the importance of these three different social media platforms. And for more trainings, please visit nbdems.com slash training hyphen Nevada.